What is going on everybody? Thank you guys so much for tuning in to another video of Adam Finance. I'm your host, Adam, obviously. Today, we're gonna to be discussing the very difficult topic of what do electrical engineers do versus what do microelectronic engineers do. So, if you guys are one of those majors or for your interest in studying one of those fields, please stay tuned. We're gonna be talking about those in today's video. Before I get started, um, please like, comment, subscribe on the channel. It helps me out, keeps me motivated. Love making these videos for you. Um, I know it helps some of you guys out choose your majors in the end. So, just leave a like, comment, subscribe, and let's get the video underway. What do electrical engineers actually do? So, in short, electrical engineers are responsible for designing, developing, testing, and supervising the manufacturing of electrical equipment. So, in a nutshell, they're dealing with electronics all day long, basically because you're an electrical engineer. Um, so that's basically a little nutshell of what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. In terms of the median salary for electrical engineers, you're looking at about $100,000 to $102,000 per year as of May 2020. Um, and that number is gonna vary obviously between company to company and if you're just going based off of cash or if you're going based off of stock and bonus equity options. Unlike other majors, electrical engineering is actually only expected to grow 7% from 20 to 20 to 20. 30. So it's not a huge growth rate. However, 7% um, is pretty much an average growth rate for an engineering major. Uh, it's not going to be upwards of 10 to 15% like maybe industrial engineering and mechanical engineering, uh, but electrical engineering is expected to grow about 7% in those 10 years. Many of you guys are wondering, what is a day-to-day -day life of an electrical engineer? So kind of what you're gonna be expecting as an electrical engineer, obviously it's gonna vary based off company to company, but you're gonna be building devices using various softwares, um, either on the computer or in person, depending on what you're doing. You're gonna be doing a lot, a lot of problem solving. As like with any other engineering major, it's a lot of problem solving. You're gonna be working with your clients, working with a specific engineering team to solve a problem. Obviously it goes back to problem solving. Um, a lot of testing the devices that you've implemented already, making sure they're up to standard, um, and obviously doing a lot of maintenance checks on machines, tools, um, software programs, a lot of problem solving involved with electrical engineering. Some might say it's more than most, but yes, it's a lot of working with a team, a lot of problem solving, a lot of testing. Electrical engineering is a very collaborative field. You're usually working with a team. You're typically not the only electrical engineer on this on site or in the company. Um, usually you're working with a team to solve these complex problems. In order to practice electrical engineering, you do not have to have your professional engineering uh, certificate. You can be just a bachelor uh, of science in a college, accredited college degree. So yes, you're gonna need to have your bachelor's degree from a college. You can't just go out, um, go to a company and practice electrical engineering because they need to see that you have passed all of those classes in order to get to where you are today. In terms of job opportunities for electrical engineers, if you're a uh, college student, you're going to be having a lot of positions uh, within various companies. I'll list the companies right here maybe uh, that I've found, but you're going to be using Handshake, LinkedIn jobs, Google jobs, um, just basic job searches, searching for electrical engineering. So they are out there. Um, obviously the 7% job growth is a little bit slower than most. However, they are there. You just have to do some finding and do some research of your own. Now that we've talked about what electrical engineers do, we can kind of shift fields and go into the microelectronics engineering field. So what exactly does a microelectronics engineer do? And let's get into that right now. In a nutshell, microelectronics uh, basically is a subdivision field of electronics major that basically deals with a very small uh, components and mi basically microscopic elements of uh, electrical systems and electrical components. So uh, if you can think about maybe like a phone on the inside of your phone, the, like the chip of it, uh, basically Everything that's making up that chip, a microelectronics major uh, a worker has done to implement that system. In terms of the growth rate for a microelectronics engineer, you're gonna be looking at about an 8% growth rate from 2018 to 2028, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. So it is a little bit higher of a growth rate than the uh, electrical engineering. However, um, it's still a low percentage of 8%. Unlike electrical engineering from microelectronics engineering position, your average salary is gonna be about 76 to $79,000. So it's about 20 to $30,000 less than electrical engineer. However, there are a lot of job openings for microelectronic engineers and your job growth uh, within the company is kind of dependent on how fast you wanna move up and how, um, how much you wanna show your uh, boss and your higher ups that you are worth more money. There are a few colleges that do offer microelectronics engineering as a program of study. Uh, they're not too many. It's a very niche field of engineering. However, there are, uh, there are a few universities that do offer it. 
You definitely need a degree with microelectronics engineering to practice this in the field. It's not something that anyone can just come off the streets and pick up um, uh, as they're working. You do need to have some previous knowledge and some previous exposure to the industry in order to kind of practice microelectronics engineering at such a subatomic level. So yes, you're going to need a degree from one of those universities listed. In terms of job opportunities for microelectronic engineers, you're going to be a little bit more limited than electrical engineering as the field is still pretty small. However, some companies that I would like to mention that are hiring for microelectronic engineer positions are Honeywell, Northrop Grumman, AT&T, and Intel. So obviously all of those companies are very big names um, and they're obviously very well-known companies. So if you're interested in those positions, definitely hit, um, hit the apply link to those and yeah, never know what might happen. One thing that's worth mentioning with microelectronics engineering, that currently in 2022, there are about 15,000 job openings. Um, compared to electrical engineering, there was about 27,000, I think it was. So yeah, you do have a lot of job openings. It's just about going out and finding them, finding where they're posted, uh, making sure your resume, resume is touched up to the best abilities, and then just applying and just seeing which one you can get with. So I don't want to come off this video to say I'm a professional in either electrical engineering and microelectronics engineering, kind of just someone who has done their research on both of these fields pretty heavily. Um, and I like comparing a couple of different majors, kind of helps you guys uh, in one video kind of see maybe what's a little bit more for you, what's not, kind of like the outcomes of your, um, your major of study. So yep, I did the research for you guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment down below. I can happily answer some of those questions for you. With all the information I've just provided, you hopefully you guys are able to make your decision um, I also have another video I'll link it up here or up here uh, about industrial engineering versus mechanical engineering uh, that video did do pretty well on my channel um, so I do offer a pretty good perspective on that one and hopefully with microelectronic engineering and electrical engineering I was able to answer some questions and clear up some, uh, some doubt in your mind if I was leave a like comment subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video peace